And now from elections in Russia to elections in the United States, the race for the White House is picking up. And former president and Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump has found perhaps his biggest MAGA supporter. However, he is not from a key battleground state, nor is he a member of the campaign team, at least not officially. In fact, he's all the way from the heart of Europe. It's none other than his longtime, longtime ally, Viktor Orban. The Hungarian prime minister says Donald Trump has a detailed plan to end the war in Ukraine. Our next report takes you inside their most recent meeting. The 2024 U.S. presidential race is gaining steam, and so is former President Donald Trump's campaign. Unprecedented support for Trump has not only been seen in Republican primaries, but also across the Atlantic in the heart of Europe, where his longtime ally, Viktor Orban, is backing his bid to return to the White House. There are great opportunities ahead of us. The world political scene at the end of the year will have a completely different picture than it is at the beginning of the year. And if God helps us, Hungary's room for manoeuvring will not decrease, but will expand to the extent we have seen in the past. We can't get involved in another country's elections, but we would really like President Donald Trump to return to the presidency and make peace here in the eastern half of Europe. There. The far-right Hungarian prime minister met Trump at his residence in Palm Beach, Florida. The focus of their discussion, apart from Trump's rerun, was the war in Ukraine. According to Orban, Trump, who he calls a man of peace, has a detailed plan to end the Ukraine war, which began two years ago. Orban says Trump won't give a penny to Ukraine if he's re-elected president, which would end the war as Kyiv cannot stand on its own feet. The Hungarian Prime Minister said that if Americans don't give money, the Europeans alone can't finance the war. He also said during Trump's presidency there was peace in the Middle East and peace in Ukraine, and that there would be no war if he was still the President of the United States. Both Trump and Orban have long shown deference and enthusiasm for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Orban has been solidifying Hungary's ties with Russia despite international pressure. He was the first leader to meet Putin in person after the Ukraine war began. With a warm handshake, he expressed Budapest's eagerness to expand cooperation with Moscow. Orban has also refused to supply Ukraine with weapons. Recently, Trump also suggested that if re-elected, he would encourage Russia to attack all US allies he deemed not to contribute enough to the NATO alliance. I came in, I made a speech, and I said, you got to pay up. They asked me that question. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. And the money came flowing in. And Henry U.S. President Joe Biden condemned these remarks as dumb, shameful, and un-American. He has accused Trump of bowing down to Russia. Former president has sent a dangerous and shockingly, frankly, un-American signal to the world. Just a few days ago, Trump gave an invitation to Putin to invade some of our allies, NATO allies. He said if an ally didn't spend enough money on defense, he would encourage Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want, end of quote. Can you imagine a former president of the United States saying that? The whole world heard it. And the worst thing is he means it. No other president in our history has ever bowed down to a Russian dictator. Well, let me say this as clearly as I can. I never will. For God's sake, it's dumb, it's shameful, it's dangerous, it's un-American. Joe Biden also took a jibe at Orban and Trump's meeting, saying that the Hungarian prime minister is looking for a dictatorship. I can tell you a lot about a person who he keeps company with. And yesterday, he was hosting at his club, Viktor Orban, who says he doesn't think democracy works. Call him a fantastic leader. Seriously. He's been sucking up to win him. <laughs> anyway. The want to dictators and authoritarian thugs all around the world. He said, 
the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un wrote him a, quote, wrote him a beautiful letter. <laughs> he bragged about calling Xi Jinping a king. He called Putin, and he said, do whatever the hell you want to our allies. I'm not making these, I'm not making these quotes up. When he says he wants to be a dictator, I believe him. But I don't want to get carried away here. While Trump is certain to be the Republican presidential nominee, European leaders are nervous about another term for him as the U.S. president, because this would mean waning U.S. support for both Ukraine and NATO. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issue, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.